Okay, today we're going to go over three things. Um, all of them have to do with the Aleph and variations that you'll see in the Aleph. So the first thing that we're going to cover is the Dagger Aleph. The Aleph Qasira. Qasira. Um, this is a little mark similar to a Fatha, but it's just a short line up and down. Uh, it's not as big as a normal Aleph. So you'll see this sometimes because the Arabic language evolved um, that now they usually just write a whole alif sometimes, uh, but some words still retain that it has a dagger alif. And basically what this signifies is that there's an alif, but it's invisible, or that it's just signified by this little mark. Uh, so some of the words that still, uh, or that have this, um, you'll see if you read Quran, You'll see the word Al-Kitab. Al-Kitab. But you notice the Alif won't be here. So sometimes when people are typing, they will type it. But um, if you're looking at old calligraphy or the Quran, you'll just see a little dagger Alif. The Alif Qasira. So this just tells you that there's a whole alif there, and this ta is pronounced with the elongation. So this is al-kitab, not al-kitab. Uh, um, so if it were to be written with the alif, it would just look like that, with the whole alif there. But you will see both. Um, another word that we've gone over is hada. Hada. There is actually supposed to be an alif after this ha. So what are we going to do? We're going to put the dagger alif right there. So it's actually hada, not just hada. So it just tells you that there's an elongation there, but the alif is not written. So it's uh, pretty simple overall. Uh, the next thing that we're going to go over is the alif maqsura. The alif maqsura. Uh, this is an alif that goes at the end of words, but it looks like a yeah. And if they're writing all the diacritical marks, they will even put a dagger alif there to let you know for sure that this is an alif maqsura. So this just makes the sound of a normal alif. So it's not a yeah, um, but it just looks like one. You also notice that they never put the dots under it. So an example of this is the word ala. Ala, this means on. Uh, as you can see here, it's not spelled with a normal alif. It's not spelled like this. It is not this. So you can see it just has the alif maqsura and the dagger alif there, and that just signifies it's a normal A sound. So this would be ala. Uh, this is also in some names, like the name uh, Musa. Musa means Moses. And you can see again here, there's no uh, regular alif, there's the alif maqsura. Um, there's no different pronunciation, it's just pronounced like a normal alif. So just like a normal elongation on the fatha here. So Musa. The last thing we're going to cover is the alif medda. And you'll see this, it'll be, have a normal alif, but it'll have this line, a really long curvy line on the top. And this means that it's elongated even more. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into an example. This is used a few different times, and you'll notice it in Quran if you're reciting an old poetry, um, that in some cases the alif is stretched out longer before the next sound. So, an example from the Quran. Ida.
إذا جاء إذا جاء and this is this way in the Quran to differentiate it between the next Hamza sound so it's not إذا جاء so you can tell there will be a break there uh, with the glottal stop so it just makes the sound uh, a bit longer it can also be uh, you can also notice it in the word Quran Quran, Quran. So this alif is a lot longer. Also, um, it does come up when you're conjugating words later on. So when there's a hamza and an alif combined, they'll just make it an alif medda. Uh, and you'll understand this more when you get into root words and you start looking at the hamza. So an example of that would be amin. Amin, Amin. Uh, this means Amen. So you can see that it just makes the sound longer and it can be in the middle of the word or at the very beginning. So these uh, are three variations of the alif that you need to know uh, when you're reading so you can know the specifics. Um, and that's all.